Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hermitcraft. Today we're just out here in the screened off porch area. We are just basically watching the sunrise over the beautiful landscape of the country club and the driving range. And I also just finished watching Scar uh, building up some landscaping around his house. Uh, he's putting in some work here. You see he's got some, some trees in the back. He's got a little bit of a lawn going on there. Uh, he's hooked up his pathway to our little farm we have outside of our house. So... Things are going pretty well. It was nice and relaxing. And so, you know, I went over to uh, to give Scar a housewarming gift. I put put a cake in his house. Also gave him a little bit of a flower. So, yeah, he's got uh, a cake, which he's apparently eaten some of. And he told me some concerning things. Um, namely that the Hermitcraft Nether Hub has fallen into disarray. It's fallen into total chaos. There's ghasts everywhere. There's holes in the walls. Things of that nature. And, you know, I'm figuring... We're in retirement out here, right? So we have a ton of time to do things that could potentially help out the server. So I figured, you know, we'll put the server on our back and we'll go and finish up uh, some of the problems with that the hub currently has. So let's head on over to the nether hub, see what the problem is. All right, guys, so we made our way to the nether hub and immediately the problem becomes apparent. Yeah, the <laughs> guests like this spawn in. They fly through these giant holes and then... People have a bad time when walking around down here, so I'm going to take this guy out before he has a chance to take me out. Um, so, yeah, we definitely need to finish up this hub. We definitely need to close it off to black out the hub with some more black concrete. Can I even shoot that high to shoot this guy up here? That is a long way. But no problem for us. No problem for us. So, Concorp has the resources. We can do this. We can fill out the... Uh, the remainder of the hub with some black concrete uh, and fill in all the walls as well. So might as well go ahead and do it, you know, put ourselves to work in retirement and get this hub totally blacked out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Alright guys, two shulker boxes of black concrete later, and we got this section done here. Uh, didn't go as far as I thought it would, but that's not going to stop us. No way, no how. So, I'm thinking probably to finish this section off, we'll probably need, let's say, three shulker boxes here. Another three or four shulker boxes across here, let's say. And then probably this section here is actually quite big, so... I'm thinking maybe six or seven shulker boxes. So let's let's aim for 12 shulker boxes of black concrete. Uh, and that should put a significant dent in what we see still around here. So yeah, let's go ahead and get that and I'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, we now hopefully have enough concrete to finish this build. So we got one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, 9, 10, and 11 full shulker boxes, completely full of black concrete. So, yeah, no problem for Concorp to provide this. After all, it is concrete. Uh, this one's not quite full, so it's actually like 10 and a half shulker boxes full of uh, black concrete. But, yeah, concrete, Concorp, you know, they go hand in hand. So, yeah, we got all this concrete, so let's go ahead and apply it to the walls and the ceiling of the hub. Hopefully this will be enough to put us over the edge here, but uh, we'll have to see because this is a massive, massive amount of work still to go. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started.
Ladies and gentlemen, the blackout of the hub is now complete. Take a look around us, and all we see is darkness. Well, almost. Uh, the next step is going to be we're going to take out all non-essential blocks to move around in this hub. That means all these blocks here, like all these, can all go. All the upper level here can go. So this whole area up here, especially this big chunk of stone bricks. Uh, so all that's going to go. And basically, we're just going to be left with the pathways uh, to each portal. Uh, and then some of the red lines on the side. Uh, but all the sections, like all this stuff in here, this can go. I'm going to keep the edging for now, but all this here is going to go. So let's go ahead and bust this out real quick, and I'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, the hub is now nearly complete. And we have just removed every single non-essential, non-path block in this hub. So... All that you see here are pathways uh, leading from one area to another, or also ice boat roads. Like, for instance, there's the ice boat road to the golf course over there. Uh, those are the only things that are standing still in this hub, so check it out. We got an enormous amount of work done here today. I'm thinking the other hermits will be pretty shocked to see what we have done. But why stop here? In fact, why stop at all? When you have the power of the Vex magic flowing through you, anything is possible, ladies and gentlemen. So, I figure we might as well just go ahead and try and finish this thing, right? That's what I'm thinking. So, let's go ahead and make our way over to the Nether Hub Materials building, uh, which we constructed a few months back. Uh, I should say I constructed a few months back. Uh, and I think some of the other hermits have been collecting some materials here. And we're going to see how they're doing, how they're progressing. And they might need a little bit of... Vex magic to help them out. So, looks like they have. So they've sort of categorized all the resources they need here, and I'm guessing these blocks are sort of like the full chests. Yeah, these are the full chests behind these blocks. So, let's see. It looks like we still need some gray glass. So we need about one, two. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six double chests, plus another chest and a half or so so about let's call it like seven and a half double chests of gray glass that's easy we can get that easy uh let's see then we have blue carpet we need one and a half chest of blue carpet also easy we can get that easily uh light blocks looks like we're needing about a chest of sea lanterns easy we can do that we got some dyes here that we can use to make some uh some gray dyes and stuff let's check this side White concrete powder is done, cyan terracotta is done, sand is done, white wool done, light gray concrete powder, lime, everything else seems to be done because we already got the black concrete bit done as well. So we can actually take out all of this. All of this is no longer needed because this is the section we've already done. So we're so close we can almost taste it and I am feeling it so I'm going to go for it. We're going to get the remaining glass we need. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven double chests of gray glass. We need two double chests of blue carpet. And we need a chest and a half or so, or actually about one chest of sea lanterns. So let's go ahead and gather all those resources up right now. At this point, I could tell you that gathering all the remaining materials for the Nether Hub project was difficult. But this is Concorp. We sent a spadesman to slay the desert and retrieved 30,000 blocks of sand. Many spades fell in this endeavor, but the spadesmen ultimately succeeded. The spadesmen then handed the sand to the blacksmith, who then threw the pristine sands into a mechanical beast long dormant. And from that beast, the glass needed to complete the hub, tens of thousands of glass emerged, newly smelted of the highest pristine quality and clarity. All of this achieved in mere moments by the magic within said beast. Concord fishermen visited the Guardian farm and took all crystals and shards and crafted new lanterns from the remains of the Guardians. The shepherds switched operations to blue wool collection and crafted enough carpets to drape the world in blue. And finally, the craftsmen turned the blacksmith's glass into a beautiful shade of gray, the handiwork of only a small fraction of workers under the direction of Concorp and their associates. All of this, things you know and expect from Concorp, where we dream what no one else can, so that we can do what no one else does. 
And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Easy as that. All the resources are now filled in for this entire project, which means we can now just go ahead and like clear these all out because uh, all of these chests are full of whatever material uh, that we have inside of here. So that is absolutely fantastic. I am loving that. And we can go ahead and just take down all the rest of this dirt because all these chests are now full. And we have all the resources needed to construct and complete the nether hub. So we're almost done. But why stop there? And you know what guys, we might as well just keep going. We've made it this far. We're in the final phase now, which is placing blocks. So the first phase is basically placing down, I think it's about 26,000 sea lanterns on this floor here. So they all go at the same level here on this first floor right above these slabs. And this is going to be what sort of back illuminates the map from underneath, which is going to be absolutely amazing. Can't wait until you guys can see this. Uh, so I'm placing down some sea lanterns. Asuma is also on. He is placing down some sea lanterns. He was placing some over here earlier. Uh, he's actually got a fairly large portion, if I can fly, done right here. So he's done this section and that section. We're just starting on this section over here. So things are looking good, guys. I think we can maybe get this hub complete in the very near future perhaps even today we'll see um but yeah things are definitely working and yeah i think we sort of jump started this project and we're now on basically the final leg because we put in uh so many hours uh, already so yeah i'll keep working here keep placing down some sea lanterns and we'll see how far we can make it All right, guys, slide update. We got a whole bunch of this thing done. Take a look. So lots and lots of sea lanterns, a little bit of jack-o'-lantern action as well down there because all this is going to be covered up anyway, so it's not really going to matter what type of light-emitting block that we use, just that we have a light-emitting block on every block. Uh, turns out the count was off by a couple of thousand sea lanterns. Uh, so we actually have to go and gather even more, but we're not going to let that stop us. No way, no how. We come too far. We work too hard to stop now. So, we're going to push through. We're going to go out to the Guardian Farm, get a couple thousand more sea lanterns, and then finish this thing off. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. An entire sea of sea lanterns and jack-o'-lanterns, providing some backlighting for what will eventually be the map here. Uh, the reason we were a couple thousand blocks short is because, I believe, as Suma calculated this up, uh, as only having light blocks underneath of carpet blocks. And the plan was to have everything else solid, but it turns out it's just a lot easier to fill in the entire thing with uh, light emitting blocks than to count it out beforehand. So, yeah, this will basically provide a nice backlighting to the entirety of the Hermitcraft map, which we will build on top of all these light emitting blocks. And the light will shine through some of the areas where we're putting carpet. And so with that now done, we've now completed all the hub ceiling, we've completed all the hub walls, we've completed all of the resource gathering for building the rest of the hub, uh, we've completed a takedown of all the unnecessary blocks in this hub itself, and we've also completed the first layer of the hub. And I think one thing from all this work we've done here at the hub today, one thing has become readily apparent to me. Hermitcraft needs Concorp Scar. They need us now more than ever. I'm thinking we might need to unretire here. What do you think? Cub, I wasn't sure about that. I was thinking about continuing our life of leisure and luxury until earlier today I found diamonds. Diamonds in our chest oh. over there. They smelled of Joe Hills, actually. Uh, smelled of Nashville, Tennessee. So I think he is a new member here at the Concorp Country Club. And boy, Cub, the sight of those diamonds. And may I point out also, Mm -hmm. I built a security room and I was going over some security logs, talking to Llama security. And some people have been breaking into our shops back at, Con at the Concorp shops back in the shopping district. And 
We're wait, retired, wait, wait. but we're still making diamonds. Hang on, hang on. People broke into shops that we closed and shut down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That that confirms it, man. We gotta we gotta unretire. We gotta come back. I really want some of that pumpkin pie. Anyway, yes, I think we should um, definitely come back because we're retired. We're sitting back, life of leisure and luxury, mm -hmm. and we're still making money. And just the thought, Cub, that we can make more money, more diamonds, and build more grandeur. Oh, I don't know about you. I mean, I've been having a great time out here, but making diamonds, I mean, that's that defines who we are. So we got to spent some diamonds recently, too. And when I spent them, I had less than I had before. And now I want more. Me too, man. Me too. Cub, I cannot believe the Llama Caravan dumped off all of our previous Concord shop merchandise here. This was supposed to be in the vault. Yeah, <laughs> this was... Yeah, they should have put this in the right spot, but, you know, they're llamas. So, I mean, they just dumped it here. All of our shop stuff has been here, and, you know, it's been in the sun. You know, it's it's, it's gotten a little bit of, of wear and tear on it, but I think it's still good to go. I think we can still put it in the shops. Mm-hmm. Ha! Ah, I can't wait to make more diamonds. Yeah, what do you say we box all this stuff up? Oh, wait, it's already boxed up. What do you say we just move it? We're going to do it ourselves. No need for llama caravans. Yep. Jeez. Yep. This is crime scene number one here at Unlimited Terracotta Wonderland. I don't remember the exact shop's name, but I'm going to go with that. Are you ready to see the crime that took place here? I'm ready to see it, man. I'm ready to see it. Uh, yeah, this is surprising. I didn't think, you know, everything was closed, or so we thought, but... Let's see it. There was supposed to be llamas standing guard out here, but that's why you don't hire llamas. Um, so look at this. Look at what pe people have done here. They've broken through the bars. <laughs> Someone actually broke down the iron bars just to get in. Even sawed though, right through them. Look Probably at, watched the locksmith guy on YouTube, you know, just sawed right through them. Bang. Yeah, dude, there's a sign that says, we are closed, keep out. And someone's like, I'm going to actively disregard the sign and just bust in. What a, what a, what a person. But they did pay. As you can see in the cyan chest here. Oh, so we so we made diamonds at the shop, even though the shop is closed down totally. Mm -hmm. wow. I can't put my finger on who was here, but I do smell with my detective nose a bit of tea. So it narrows me down to believe there was somebody British, but I don't know who forever will be unknown. OK, well, man, I mean, a shop that makes diamonds, even when it's closed, that's a pretty good shop. That's a pretty good shop. One more reason we should come back, but we got to check out crime scene number two. And we're here at crime scene number two, Cub, and we know who the perpetrator was of this one. That was a mumbo of the jumbo. Mumbo came here and broke in? He did. He did. And as guy. you mentioned, a crafty fella, he tried to cover his tracks, didn't realize that there were cake surveillance camera in the area. Oh, yeah. yep. Yep. Man. Yeah. So he gun. put his bars back down, and here is the crime scene. Look. Get the size of those diamonds in there. Whew. Wow. Gets me excited. Man, oh man. That, that, I think this this diamond collection right here, this might be more than the shop has made so far this season while it was closed. <laughs> so it made more while it was closed than it was open. Maybe we should I just keep it right. closed? I mean, that that's insane. That's absolutely insane. Well, isn't there something in marketing where you want to, you know, reduce the stock or, you know, make it really exclusive, maybe tell people they can't have it and it just people want it more, right? They want it like the the Supremes or whatever that that stuff is. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. High beasts? Yeah, exactly. If you can't have it, you want it more. So, yes. maybe that's that's this that type of like that type of thing going on here. The shops are open, but they're closed. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, but now they're going to be back open, right? So I think we should, should we take these down? Should we just bust out, bust out the doors here on all these shops and put the stock back? Yep, I think so. I think we need to restock all the shops, take down the bars on uh, on Happy Coral over there, um, yep. and uh, reopen all of the Concord shops. Okay, man, let's do it.
all the shops have now been restocked, refilled, and reopened, Scar. It's good to be back, Cub. And you know what? I have no hard feelings towards those individuals who stole from us. I feel like they inspired us to be, once again, entrepreneur businessmen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Abs- I mean, they did pay, though. Like, they didn't really steal, technically. But they were. it was close, so it was, it was still illegal. It was breaking and entering, I believe. I'm yeah. no lawyer, nor officer of the law. Yeah. I did watch a lot of cops and live PD. That's my that's my knowledge. So I think it is breaking and entering still. But we forgive them. We're yeah. forgiving people we are. Yep, we are. We are indeed. And you know what else, Scar? Mm-hmm. I've been I've been messing around in this watchtower here. Yeah, yeah. We've reestablished the link with the satellite at Concorp, and we're good to reopen that as well. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the gates of Concorp. And Ow. you almost made it. You almost made it, Sky. I was close one. I saw, <laughs> had a front row seat <laughs> to that uh, experience. Crashing Concorp just summer. wanted to wave us high, welcoming us back to our little humble abode. Yeah. And yeah. I can see the fountain was not cleaned while we were gone from the last time uh, Joe Hills was in it, I see. Yeah, we, we can clean it up, though, pretty easily. Mm-hmm. Look at the, mm-hmm. We got Captain Jack up here on the fountain as well. He's, uh, he's holding down the fort for us up here. Captain oh, Jack Sparrow. Look at the little fella. What a legend. Yeah, man. That is that is a guy who knows his hair product. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, he's good. He's good like that. Uh, so yeah, Ow. what do you think? Uh, what do you think about reopening this place uh, the uh, the old fashioned way? Oh, the old fashioned way. You saying potentially the Vexnos? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Check this out. We people people forgot about Vexnos. They, they don't oh, know. Oh, I forgot about him. This dude is the most powerful dude on the server. He's got all five of the Infinity Stones, plus mm-hmm. the uh, the Cake Stone, which is the most powerful of them all. Oh yes. So check this out. We got the reality stone up here. And yeah. all you got to do here, I'll, I'll hand this off to you. Ooh. All you got to do is right click with it and Powerful. know that reality can be whatever we want it to be. We're hole in one. Following is brought to you by Chinese X Magic Little Bit. Can't say well, it looks kind of. Did it work? I think it did. I, the, fa- the, wa- the water is flowing in the fountain. I think it works, Scar. I think it worked. Oh, no way. We're back in Operation Cub. We're back. Amazing. Like nothing even happened. That's awesome. See, that's the power of the reality stone, man. Reality can be whatever we want. Oh, I love reality now. Look at the fountain. You just think of that fountain as just diamonds flowing into our pockets. I love every minute of it. We got the got the little splash pools over here when it's warm out. We can just jump in here, cool mm-hmm. off. Love Absolutely it. beautiful. We got the factory back opened. Look at this beautiful factory in here. My goodness, just glorious. Just oh, the glorious. sound of workers. I love it. Sounds of workers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, beautiful. Skywalker's back up there, harvesting wheat up there, so that's great. It's good to see him it's up like there. It's like he threw a piece onto the glass. Come on now. Just polluting wastefulness. Um, looks like the base has been opened back up, the storage area. Oh, yep, that's back up. We got the tree farm. Cleared out, yeah, back open now, so that's fantastic. The smelters back up and operational. And hmm. things are things are back to how they should be. Ah, it's good to be back. I'm happy to be back. You yeah. had a good time, but I'm ready for new things, new opportunities for potential profit. Oh yeah. And cake eating. Oh yeah. So much profit, so much cake eating. Yeah. The way it should be. The way it should be. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get busy. So we are now officially unretired, Concorp is officially reopened, and all the shops are open as well. Although, to be honest, our shops were doing quite well despite the fact that they were closed, and we'd actually removed almost all of our products. Like, they still made diamonds, even though that was the case. So, that's the sign of a strong company, and I'm looking forward to building some really awesome stuff here with you guys in the very near future. But anyways, for now, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Cub. Goodbye.